Put a smile on your face When you're moving from place to place, place. Good morning, good morning, morning Good morning, morning Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Tobago Updates Television and thank you for staying with us for this extended version as we talk things budget 2025 and the allocation to Tobago. Uh, this morning we continue conversations with the minority leader Mr. Kelvon Morris as we go through the phase, the paces rather, of the budgetary allocation. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Miss Cumby. Good morning, all of Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago and all your viewers locked on. Right. So we're talking about budget 2025. And I want to start with the the talks of everybody every year for each <laughs> budget. We know when you submit a budget, doesn't matter the administration. Once you submit a budget, it is more than likely that you will not get 100% of what you asked for. So here we are, um, the THC submitted their budget asking for 3.2 and getting 3.8 rather and receiving 2.599, a shortfall of 1.2 billion. And now having to find ways to make what um, is available now work for the projects that they propose to do here on the island of Tobago. First and foremost, I want to get from you, where are you in terms of the allocation that was given to Tobago? Are you in a good place? Are you comfortable with it? Or do you think perhaps you could have gotten a, a bigger piece of the pie? Uh, Ms. Gambi, let me firstly, I just want to um thank everyone on sunday for the persons who came out physically and the thousands of persons who viewed online and participated in that day of prayer and uh, thanksgiving i really want to um thank each and everyone for the support in that initiative so i just wanted to take the to publicly put that on the record um with respect to the bu budget and as you rightfully pointed out you know, it is really in a real sense a wish list. You're asking for your best case scenario. Mm -hmm. And obviously you are quite aware that you may not get everything. Mm -hmm. So what it really means is therefore whatever you get, you got to manage, mm -hmm. All right? And uh, administrations past have shown that we have, they have asked for even more mm -hmm. and did not get it and got even less mm -hmm. and still had to manage it. So the, the, I think the mindset has always got to be whatever you receive, you have to be prepared, you have to have a plan to manage it to the benefit mm -hmm. of the people. And therefore, this is where I believe the conversation got to be in Tobago. It's about how do we manage the resources that we actually have. And the question we have to ask ourselves as Tobagonians as well is whether the over the past three years, whether these resources that we have received have been properly managed. That is the question. Mm. I have not seen anyone in this space currently really call this administration to account. Mm. And uh, I, even as we close off another financial year, do we know what, how our monies were actually spent? Have there been a clear reporting to the people of Tobago? Do we even know how much money was not spent? Because you know, in the past, you would hear about unspent balances. Mm -hmm. And in some instances, people would say, well, they send back the money to Trinidad and all kinds of things. But do we have that kind? And it's time enough. We move the conversation from what we did not get to actually having the conversation is to what do we have and how will it be used? And, you know, talking about unspent balances, which really isn't a conversation that has entered the space, um, as far as I'm aware, is there a, an approach in terms of how do you know? Is it that they are supposed to, is the administration supposed to say this is the unspent balance or is it that they just speak about this is what we're presenting for our budget and this is what we've received? Is there a policy guideline or is it left up to conscience? Well, what I know is precedent. The precedent in the past is that when you present in June the, the budget estimates for Tobago, usually a given account, a full picture of both what um, the expenditure received, how that was spent, and the revenue, what you, what you also receive, and at, 
and what you actually have. So you're supposed to declare mm -hmm. what do you, what is the unspent balances. And even as we go into the reprioritization process that should come sometime in November, that should also be declared, but that has not been declared for the past three years. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm saying what Tobagonians need is a real open discussion. Let us not allow persons to carry us down a rabbit hole about who don't like we and why they don't like we. Okay. When the reality is this administration is being treated no different from administrations of the past. And if you look at the data, let us take away the emotions because I hear people saying fiscal wickedness and all kind of accusations. If you look at the data, the data does the data actually suggests that this administration is being treated in some not in some instance, in a real instance, even better. Because one, if you look at 2021 to 2022, where they received $2.357 billion. And then if you look at 2022, 2023, that was increased to 2.52 billion. That is a couple hundred millions more. And even 2023, 2024, that also increased to 2.585 billion, which is about $60 million more. And even in this situation, there's a slight increase. So <laughs> I don't know how, in a real sense, somebody we are saying don't like you continue to give you more. And even more important is the fact that in receiving more, you are getting it on even more favorable terms because the PNM of the past recognized that the country on a whole had a challenge with cash flow and agreed with the central government on request of the finance minister that perhaps because we have the cash flow for, um, issues, we will accept the, the transfers month to month. Mm -hmm. This arrangement currently, the, the chief secretary indicated that he prefers to get it because the law prescribes that you get it on block quarterly. Mm -hmm. Chief secretary says he understands, but give us the two months in advance and we'll get the third, the, the final tranche in the third month. And they are receiving that. The chief secretary is even on record as indicating in the past, the previous administration didn't even get its full allotment of what was declared as the allocation for Tobago. They presently are getting every red cent of that allocation. So the point is, here you are saying that you are somehow being treated badly or poorly when in a real sense, your, the terms upon which you are receiving your allocation is even better than those in the past. And when we do the comparison, let us do the comparison. Even with, with, with respect to the challenges that the previous administration, uh, they were getting, the GDP of Tobago stood at a growth rate at the, at when this, the previous administration demitted office, at 4%, that is a positive growth rate. Currently, even with receiving more resources, the GDP of Tobago is at negative 2%. And we have to ask our, ourselves the question, why is this happening? These are the investigations that need to be happening in Tobago space. And I, I find it kind of disingenuous that we are allowing persons to change the narrative. The chief secretary, one more point before I allow you to ask, the <laughs> chief secretary is on record. He said it in 2018 that the issue Tobago have is not an issue of money. That was his, he said it is a management issue. So how come now that you are on this, in the seat, in the hot seat where you have to manage, you are now telling Tobagonians, well, here what? It's not a management issue, no? is me our i need more money how come the narrative has changed uh mr maurice <laughs> uh, you're very very engaging discourse here this morning and of course bringing out very salient points as well and i want to go back a little bit to the part where you said that um the the current administration receives every single cent that they request 
um, or that is due to them. And just last night after the um, budgetary um, presentation, we saw the press, re <laughs> press conference coming out of the current administration and the Secretary of Finance saying that we are supposed to collect $27 million as a result of the revenue because, you know, they had to wait for the revenue collection to determine what would be the final check for fiscal 2024. And um, the collection should have been $27 million. However, a check was cut for $17 million. And so $10 million is still outstanding. I am not sure as of midnight last night if that was... <laughs> If that was, um, you know, released to the THA um, and in the bank account, as the secretary um, said. So that is one area there where we have to look at collecting every cent as it were in accordance to law. Um, the other thing is management. Everybody's talking about management, which is absolutely correct. Because if, for instance, God forbid, somebody, you, you have a family. Let's let's bring it back to the family. Two of our uh, previous interviews spoke about yes, the family. Correct. So you have a family situation. Mommy is working, daddy is working. Somebody loses their job. So we have less income coming in. How do we sit around and manage? And now we have a lot of um, projects that are on the table, development projects that are on the table. How the thing now is how do we prioritize which one is what do we do? What do we cut? What do we minimize? What do we so how 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 what is the approach now? Well, Miss Combe, you have all the answers there you know, because look, you just you just stated it. You as a family, you would have income and sometimes things changing. It could be whether it's loss of earnings, income, or it could just be sickness that would take away from something. So you would have had your budget, but something comes in the way and disrupts that. And then you will have to make adjustments. And uh, therefore, you will also have to make priorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, in prioritizing, you would decide what absolutely needs to happen. And in some instance, you might say, well, perhaps maybe I can invest, take out of this, I can invest something and that investment might bring something additional. Mm -hmm. You may say, well, this one, it has to happen notwithstanding that mm -hmm. I don't have the money. And that is how you manage. I could speak personally because I am someone who, I am married, I had a wife who was terminated by this administration and we had to make adjustments in a real sense. The, grocery, the amount we spent on groceries had to be reduced and we had to make reduce um, certain luxury items that you would enjoy. And that is how you, how you manage. In this instance, what are we seeing in Tobago? We are hearing, they are telling us we don't have enough money. But at the same time, almost every Monday morning, a secretary is somewhere flying, enjoying life. Is that how you manage scarce resources? Let us look at the road down at um, Chauvin. That road started off as a $65 million road, which was a road that the design was to be a dual highway all the way from Cove, connecting you directly to the airport. That has been disrupted by this administration. They decide they will do it on their own. Fine. It has ballooned from $65 million to over $100 million because of poor planning and poor and mismanagement. And that is what we are talking about when we say, are you managing what you already have to the best benefit of the people of the island? And so as you talk about priorities, Look at the former administration, all those buildings that were built, whether you look at community centers, the 14 community centers, health centers that were built, the hospital, they didn't get all the allocation for that. You know what they had to do? They had to reprioritize things and they would, in this fiscal, they may decide, okay, we would suppress this project mm -hmm. and we'll carry forward that balance and we'll put it towards building this hospital because we believe this hospital is a priority. And that is how you manage. Where is the plan? All we are hearing is crying wolf, wolf, wolf. But where have they actually told us? The chief secretary by now, if he was being honest with the people of Tobago, would have known that he would not get that 5.8 percent but he wants to carry us down a fight because it suits their politics but if he was planning properly and prudently he would have had a contingency plan that tells us we will get about 2.5 
or $2.6 billion and plan for it. Right. In conversations yesterday, I interviewed the um, Secretary of Finance yesterday, and um, you're saying um, if the Chief Secretary already knows, we everybody knows that we would not get the 5.8%, and I don't think they went in um, <laughs> thinking we're going to get this 5.8%. No, well, they brought a bill, eh? They brought a bill, a motion, actually, on Thursday, still trying to hoodwink Tobagonians about that 5.8% because it suits their politics. And even I want you to see the disingenuity in this administration. We said, hear what? We hear if money is a problem because you're saying you need more money, you need more money, you need more money. Here it is. There is a bill that is in the parliament that offers guarantees to Bego. It's not about anybody's discretion because within this arrangement, I keep hearing them saying the government is acting all unlawful. There is a band that the DRC allow, mm -hmm. allows, 4.03 at the minimum and 6.9 at the maximum. Mm -hmm. And you can choose as an admin, a government any portion within that band. So therefore, once you do that, you are not um, acting on, outside of the law. But they continue to hoodwink people and tell people that the government is doing something unlawful, which is not the truth. We said there is a piece of legislation that if you're saying that this is your main concern at, the the, at this time, that you need more resources, it guarantees you even more than what you are begging for, which is 6.8%. And I'm saying... The government, 5.8%. No, more than 5.8%, but it, this bill guarantees you 6.8%. 6 6 so you're getting even 1% 1, 1 more than you are asking for, which really, in dollars and cents, is a billion dollars more. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed. And we have foregone over the last three years, had we supported that bill, $4 billion. In fact, if you do the maths, if you do the match right now, 6.8% of this $59 billion is almost $4 billion. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? If we had support this bill right now, the conversation would have not been about we didn't get enough. It would have been how could we use this windfall because it would have been $1.5 billion additionally. And we called on them. I want to be one to understand. We called on them in the house. I said, why are we fighting up about going to decide or agree that we should beg for 5.8 when we can all as a house say, let us agree to support the bills that guarantees us 6.8 and not just guarantees us, but let us come together as the THA and call on all parliamentarians because it's the PNM by itself cannot give Tobago that bill. You need a three-fifth majority. And it means that you have to get all parliamentarians to agree. Let us go down as THA, not PNM, not TPP or PDP. Let us go down as the THA and sit with all parliamentarians, the 41 in the lower house and the 36 in the Senate. And let us have the discussion, come to an agreement and have those bills passed. Don't you think that is a more reasonable, sensible arrangement so that going forward, we don't have to always be having this back and forth, hurrah, 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 as we ain't get enough when we have this arrangement, which at minimum takes away the issue of underfunding mm. that goes out the door because we are saying even now, all we need is 5.8 and it guarantees you 6.8. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with the minority leader, Mr. Kelvon Morris, as it relates to budget 2025, of course, bringing out his strong points and opinions as to the money that was dispensed to Tobago and what we could have had and what we would do with the money that we have now. Management, of course, being uh, the primary thing in the conversation this morning as it relates to the budgetary allocation for Tobago. I want to say thank you so much, Mr. Morris, for joining us this morning and, of course, having the conversation here. And we, we hope to continue you having conversations as Definitely. the budget is I'm concerned. Uh, we know that, you know, <laughs> and we appreciate that very much because we need to have that kind of converse, balanced conversation in the space as well. So thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to go for a short break before we continue conversations this morning. And as we go, we invite you to help us share the live, share the live, share the live.